And we are live. You already know who it is. My name is Mike Kyle, AKA the Fantasy Vulture. I have over a decade worth of fantasy football experience and have continuously competed for fantasy championships over the course of the past seven seasons. Let's make it eight in 2021. But enough of me, I'm here for you on today's episode of the FB Show. We are kicking it off year two, bringing back my favorite series that I did in year one, all 32, breaking down every single NFL team, all through the lens of fantasy football. We're going to kick it off hot. We're starting off with the best offense in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs, starting off year two on an absolute heater. Before we do that, we need to establish some ground rules because clearly things are uh, things have leveled up just a little bit here at the nest. So, I mean, we're going to keep it real simple here. I'm going to keep the same energy that I just brought for the next 30 minutes. No ifs, ands, or buts. Guys, fantasy football is fucking back. We're here. It is my favorite time of year. It is July. Draft season is in one month. We are in prime research mode right now. And then after that, we got the five-month marathon from September all the way through December and leading up into January for my favorite time of the year. So the energy that I just brought, we're going to keep that all the way through. But that being said, I understand that some of you don't have the time to watch or listen to a 30-minute podcast or video, but that's okay because in the description down below are going to be timestamps for specific players. Now, my only caveat to this, if you go that route, you need to watch at least two. You need to watch at least two, because listen, I'm not putting on a show for fucking nothing, right? Okay, cool. And last but not least, at Fantasy Vulture, this is the brand about winning. We're gonna kick your ass, and we're gonna have a whole lot of fun while doing it. All right, cool, cool. If you're good, if you're good for all three of those, leave a like, let me know, let me know. If you, if you hit that like button, that will tell me that you agree to the terms and agreements that we just laid out. Cool? Subscribe, and then let's just get, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to fucking roll, baby. So we're going to dive right in to the head of the snake of the Kansas City Chiefs, and that is Patrick Mahomes, who finished last year as quarterback four on the year. He averaged 25 points per game, 15 games played. If you were to pace that out, as you see right there, the adjusted score, one of the things that we do here that is specific to me is adjusted score. It's my favorite thing to look at every year. And basically what this does is this eliminates injuries, it eliminates suspensions, it eliminates missed games by any and all players so we can get an actual representation of where a player would have finished if they played all 16. And if they did play all 16, where would they finish if their peers and other players at their positions finished or played a full 16, excuse me. So again, Mahomes averaged 25 points per game, Played 15 out of 16 games, but if you were to adjust that out to a 16-game pace, Patrick Mahomes is quarterback three then and there. You want to talk about weekly finishes, Patrick Mahomes is as consistent as it gets at the quarterback position, and baby, is it a treat. Ten games inside the top, ten games inside the top 12, excuse me, five inside the top 24, just, there, there's no such thing as a bust game for Patrick Mahomes, right? Now his stats. His stats are, again, on another level. Almost 400 completions, 390 to be exact, 588 pass attempts, 4,700 yards, 300 rushing yards, 40 touchdowns, and six interceptions. Now, of course, Patrick Mahomes is going to be quarterback one in ADP, which he is going in the early third round, but I have him at quarterback three, and we're starting off the year on a hot take. I don't know if it's really a hot take. I feel like a lot of people have Kyler above Mahomes just because of the rushing upside that Kyler provides, which is one of the reasons why I have Kyler one spot ahead. But there's one other quarterback that I have ahead of Patrick Mahomes and Kyler Murray. Who's my QB1? I guess you're going to have to subscribe to find out. But here's my favorite Patrick Mahomes stat. And honestly, if you want to take Mahomes based off of this stat alone, I wouldn't blame you. I blatantly would not blame you. Patrick Mahomes had 10 games with 40 plus pass attempts. And that is just volume that you cannot find anywhere. That is literally Ryan Fitzpatrick on steroids, except for Patrick Mahomes is God and Ryan Fitzpatrick is Patrick Mahomes light, right? Like that's really like what this comparison comes down to. Um, 
it's wild. It really is wild that you can get a quarterback like this who just chucks. Like, he just fucking gunslings. The rushing isn't on, like, an elite level by any means, but it's more than fair. And you just know what you're to get from Patrick Mahomes every single week. And there is a lot of value in that. But that being said, like, I, I am part of the bandwagon that says wait on quarterback. So personally for me, I'm passing on Mahomes. If you want to pull the trigger, I don't blame you. Like, it, it, pays to, it pays to have the best player in the NFL, right? But that being said, if this were real-life NFL, fantasy football would be totally different than what it currently is. Like, value matters, and you need Mahomes to finish inside that top one or two uh, in order to return that value for where you drafted him at. So, I'm not the biggest fan. That being said, like, Mahomes is going to finish top five. Unless he blows out his knee, misses the game, gets suspended for PEDs, I mean, like, my God, my God. You're going to get Patrick Mahomes. He's going to carry your fantasy team, but just the value isn't quite there like some other quarterback just because how saturated that position is. But I want to talk about a guy who I think has a ton of value right now, and that is Clyde edwards Alaire. Oh, by the way, if I'm looking here or I'm looking here, I got notes all over the place. I don't know where to look. My camera's right in the middle. It's fine. Bear with me. So Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Oh my God. I'm so excited for this one. Clyde Edwards-Alaire finished as running back 22 in both formats, standard and PPR. If you look at his weekly finishes, he had four games as a running back one, four games as a running back two, and three games as a running back three. Going over his stats, 181 carries, 36 receptions, 800 rushing yards, almost almost 300 receiving yards, and five total touchdowns. His adjusted score for the year, 12.2 points per game, 13 games played. His new finish would be running back 24. So he finishes as a running back two, just barely. This is where I'm so excited about Clyde edwards lair Where you are getting him right now, in that third round behind Patrick Mahomes at running back 16 off of the board. I have him at running back 15, but my God, have I been trying to find, to find it in me to adjust the ranks and move Clyde up further. Because my thing with Clyde is I think we all missed on Clyde last year. I know I was a guy who was just super high on him, had him I think at running back five or six entering the season, and it didn't pan out. But here's what I mean when I put that in quotes. And if you guys listen to the podcast, I just put pan out in quotes. <sighs> of Clyde Edwards-Alaire's first 13 games in the NFL, nine of them, he had double digit, uh, he had double digit fantasy output. Of the first 10 games, eight of them were in double figures. And he also had three games with 20 plus carries. Now, the Chiefs ended up bringing in Le'Veon Bell, kind of threw everything off, and really one of the big downfalls with Clyde was the touchdowns. I mean, it's been very, very rare that we've seen a Andy Reid running back not be able to just get into the end zone. Think of how many times early in the year that Clyde got the ball inside of the five and it just, just didn't come through. Just didn't come through. So now we're here one season later, understands the system more, still a great pass catching running back, no Le'Veon Bell. If you want to say Daryl Williams is going to be anything, by all means, go ahead. I don't really care. Damien Williams is out of there. Guys, it's going to be, it's going to be the Clyde Edwards-Alaire show. It's what, it's what it's going to be. And you're getting him at an absolute value now because of his poor performance last season, when in reality, like I just said, Nine out of 13 games in double figures, started off hot out the gate, had multiple games above 15 points, had a few 20 plus point performances in there as well. I mean, guys, you are getting a running back who second year in the NFL, best offense in football, best, I mean, highest scoring team in football. Like there is going to be so much value in getting Clyde with where you're at. Now, the question becomes, can you rely on him as your running back one. And I think this really much, this really depends on your team structure. So let's say you have a late first round pick. I would look to go, I, I'm probably not gonna double up with Clyde and Kelsey. 
so let's just say you have a late first and you pick Devonte adams and then you go george kittle in the second let's let's just say hypothetically and then you go clyde and you start off with adams clyde and kittle i think i think there are worse ways that you could start so that's something that's really intriguing to me i love clyde the top 10 upside is there again the fact that i'm at 15 is crazy to me absolutely crazy so i'm really excited to see what clyde does this year and for the sake of my dynasty team i hope that clyde returns to that projection that we had for him last year i think it's definitely in the realm of possibilities and there's a chance that you are looking at league winner clyde edwards alaire this year and it won't even be close now let's talk about tyree kill baby Whew. i mean what what else what else can you say about cheetah Finished last year as wide receiver two in both formats, averaged 19 points per game, 13 games played. Also would have been wide receiver two if you pace that out just because of how great Devontae Adams was last year. Um, my God. 135 targets, 87 receptions, uh, 1,200 receiving yards. But here's the kicker. 15 receiving touchdowns. 15 unbelievable truly truly an astronomical number and with that he had seven games as a wide receiver one five games as a wide receiver two and zero games as a wide receiver three his adp he's currently he's currently the number one wide receiver taking off the board going in the back of the first round at 111 i have him ranked at wide receiver four and here's why here's why i feel like a lot of my rankings with some of these chiefs between mahomes and really hill like just these two guys I'm not down on them by any means, but my thing about it is there's just a few other players whose situations I tend to like more. One of the things about Tyreek is that he has the tendency to disappear, and as of late, he's kind of had the tendency to be injured. I don't really factor that in, like I said, but the consistency is one of the things that I actually I do factor in a bit, and we've seen disappearing acts from Tyreek where if he doesn't get that 60-yard touchdown or he doesn't get that one big play and this Chiefs offense just rolls on without him, let's say uh, Kittle gets in the end zone twice and for sake of this argument, let's say Clyde does as well, there's no real big threat or big reason to throw to Tyreek just down the field or take some deep shots or whatever the case is, utilize him and maximize Tyreek in the way that he is best known for. So we've seen disappearing acts from Tyreek Hill and that's just kind of like the one big concern. Like you look at some of these other guys like Devontae Adams, uh, like Stephon Diggs, DeAndre Hopkins, and it's just like these offenses fucking run through those three players. And with Tyree Kill, it's not to say that the offense doesn't because as we know, it's a two-headed, it's a two-headed dragon between Tyreek and Travis Kelsey. But with those three guys, it's like clear cut number one, nobody else around them, and they're going to get force fed the ball like crazy. So those are the only reasons why I have uh, those three guys ahead of Tyreek. Again, it's, it's no shade to Reek. If you take Tyreek as the first wide receiver off the board, by all means, more power to you. I'm, actually, I'm all here for it, uh, but I'll say it. There's a lot of good wide receivers in the NFL. I know very, very bold of me to say, but I'm going to be the one that goes on a limb and says it. And now let's go to another wide receiver here. Um, me, Cole Hardman. Sammy Watkins is out of there. And this leaves room for Miko Hardman to make that year three jump. But we've been waiting for Miko Hardman to do something for the past two years, and it just hasn't worked out. Last year, had one game inside the top 12, one game inside the top 24, one game inside the top 36. Finished as wide receiver 58 in PPR, 57 in standard. He averaged 6.7 points per game on all 16 games played, and this is where that adjusted score comes into effect. You pace that out for 16 games and map out everybody else. Nicole Hardman is wide receiver 77. And like that's that's just the thing. It's just he hasn't done it. And he is a guy who is that Tyreek Hill clone, kind of, right? Just very, very comparable in that way. 62 targets, 41 receptions. 560 yards and four touchdowns i just i just can't do it i just can't do it right now his wide his adp right now is wide receiver 56 going in the back of the 12th i have him ranked at wide receiver 71 and like that is obviously like super fucking low but again there's a lot of good wide receivers in the nfl and 
when have we seen a Kansas City Chiefs second wide receiver be productive? When? The answer is we haven't. Like we saw a flash in the plan, we saw a flash in the pan with Sammy Watkins for all of like two weeks, and that was it. Before that, can you can you name the Kansas City Chiefs number two wide receiver? Because I sure as hell can off the top of my head. It's literally it's going to be Kelsey, Hill, Clyde, and then everybody else. And that everybody else isn't valuable. The thing we were saying all last year was if you were deciding between Demarcus Robinson and McCall Hardman, you were spinning the fucking wheel and hoping and praying to God that you started the right one and one of them lucked into a touchdown. So I'm out, I'm out, I'm out on McCall. If you want to take the shot, by all means, there are worse players to take a shot on because of the fact that you're getting this player within the best offense in football. Anything could happen here. But just for myself right now, I just I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm too scared. I've been burned by me, Cole, too many times. And I'll let somebody else take the shot. And he's a guy that I'm willing to be wrong on this year. All right. And finally, let, let's wrap this bad boy up. Travis Kelsey. And what you're looking at right now is blatantly insane. Blatantly insane. Uh, me and my, uh, my league mate, really good friend, Brandon Kinsey, he was helping me put all these together. And we were just going through Travis Kelsey's stats. He actually owns Kelsey and Dynasty. And we were just laughing. We were literally just laughing. Tight end one in both formats. Average 17 points per game. 15 games played. Still finishes wide receiver number one with the adjusted score. 40, 145 targets, excuse me. 105 receptions. 1,400 receiving yards. 11 touchdowns. 14 games as a wide, as a, I'm sorry, 14 games as a tight end one. Zero games as a tight end two, and a random game as a tight end three, so only one time where he really hurt you. I mean, come on now. Of course, he's going to be the number one tight end off of the board, going ahead of Tyreek Hill, actually. Uh, going at 110, Tyreek going at 111, and naturally, I have him ranked as my tight end well, as my tight end one as well, excuse me. But I want to bring something up here. He had 10 games as a top five tight end. But there's something else that I really wanna that I really wanna say. Let me, let me pull it up right here. So I do these things basically called what I call positional value charts. And what this aims to do is figure out when you should target which players. Um, for example, we all know early in the first round you're gonna go all running back because running backs win you fantasy championships. Let's say that again. Running backs win you fantasy championships. And so like there's a reason. Why running by why Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin, Derrick Henry, Kamara, Zeke, why all these guys go early in drafts, right? However, knowing when to pick those wide receivers, knowing when to pick those early tight ends, and really just understanding the layout of points and point distribution matter. It really fucking matters. So for example, I'm, what I'm looking at right now is I am looking at positional values, position by position. I have the total points for every single player, and I have it sorted by by just that, by just that. So here's what I'm going, here's what all this leads up to right now. I've never been somebody on the early tight end bandwagon. I've never been able to do it. Because for me, I would rather soak up that value of the running backs, of wide receivers and then tight end at the end like that's literally how i draft it's i go running back super early repeatedly like the, my first three my first three three of my first four picks excuse me are always running backs that fourth pick is going to be a wide receiver i'll probably stack them on wide receivers then at that point and then save tight end to the back of the draft but what i'm about to tell you is going to change anybody's tune that's been in that same boat that i have because i've seen the light on early tight end. Travis Kelsey, last year, if you were to put Travis Kelsey as a wide receiver, Travis Kelsey would have finished at wide receiver three. And that is fucking insanity. That's insanity. Like we all talk about the positional cheat code 
that are some of these tight ends, right? The George Kittles, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, Darren Wallers, probably Kyle Pitts, someone who I adore and we'll talk about at a later date. But we know the value that some of these tight ends provide. And then you look at that and you say, holy shit, this guy is an absolute cheat code. So I've seen the light. It took me a while, but I've seen the light. And if you want to go Travis Kelsey in the first round, in the back of the first, I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Uh, so just for example, uh, Travis Kelsey finished number eight. Between, this is just between running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. I don't factor in quarterbacks because their scoring is so skewed. Um, but between those three positions, Travis Kelsey was the number eight overall player in fantasy last year. Again, he would have finished as wide receiver three. And I believe he would have been running back six. So if you take Kelsey in the back of the first, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. And just for context on this, just a little bit more here. Um, Darren Waller, who was the number two tight end on the year, would have been, let's see, that is wide receiver. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, Darren Waller would have, been, would have been wide receiver 11. You are looking at a monstrous jump. Last year, Travis Kelsey, uh, 278 fantasy points. Darren Waller, 225. Literally a 50-point difference between those two guys who finished one and two at their position respectively. And we all thought that Darren Waller was fucking amazing last year. Travis Kelsey was, was in another fucking stratosphere in the same season. So I'm all in. I'm all in. I've seen the light. I've seen the light. I, I was such a big holdout, but we're here. And I'm very glad to be here now because if you can get that guy, if you can get that guy and have that kind of positional advantage and you're smart enough, like all of you watching are, to be able to construct a team around Travis Kelsey as your son, I think you can do some damage. I think you can do some damage, especially with how deep running back has gotten over the course of this year and how infinite deep the pool of wide receivers that you can take shots on in the back of your draft. There's a way to work it. You, I'm cool with it. Give me the, the green light, the stamp of approval on Travis Kelsey in the first round. We're here, baby. I'm on board. And that's going to do it. We're here. We're done with Team number one, one down, 31 to go of all 32. The series where I break down every single fantasy team. I'm sorry, every single NFL team through the lens of fantasy football. I mean, I was due to stumble at some point, but it's fine. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button down below. Really supports the channel. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of this shit. Because this shit's going to be fucking sweet this year. And I'll see you in the next video. Follow me on all social media platforms at FFVulture. And thank you so much for watching. Let's get about out of here. Later.